Dear students, in this lecture we will learn about membrane organization and fluid mosaic model. Let us start with the introduction. The biomembranes have a similar structure formed by assemblies of lipids and protein molecules which are held together by non-covalent interactions. Generally, all membranes have a basic structure made up of continuous lipid bilayer. This lipid bilayer forms an impermeable barrier around the cells or cellular compartments limiting the flow of water soluble molecules. The protein and carbohydrate components are distributed in the lipid bilayer. All biomembranes are dynamic and fluid structures and the proteins and lipid components can move in the plane of the membrane. All membranes are also asymmetrical structures that is the distribution of lipid and protein compositions on the two faces of the membranes are usually different which reflects different functions of the two sides. Although the composition of lipid and protein components of different membranes vary in different types of membranes, the concepts for basic structure and organization can be applied to all intracellular and plasma membranes. Let us now see the fluid mosaic model. The fluid mosaic model of membrane proposed by S. J. Singer and G. L. Nicholson in 1972 summarizes the understanding of the composition, structure and thermodynamics of plasma membrane in detail. According to this model, the structural framework of cell membranes is formed by a bilayer of lipid molecules while the protein molecules are located either across the bilayer as the integral or intrinsic proteins or on the outer and inner surfaces of the lipid bilayer as extrinsic proteins. The lipids and integral proteins are amphipathic in nature. The lipid molecules tend to aggregate in such a manner that the hydrophobic or nonpolar groups are situated inside the bilayer while the hydrophilic groups are projected towards the water phase in the cytosolic phase or exoplasmic phase. Similarly, the integral proteins are intercalated in the lipid bilayer with their nonpolar regions traversing the lipid bilayer and their polar regions protruding from the surface. The fluid mosaic model of biological membranes considered the membranes as two-dimensional liquids in which lipids and protein molecules could diffuse easily. Let us now see the organization of lipids and biomembranes in detail. The biomembranes are primarily composed of a thin layer of amphipathic phospholipids that form lipid bilayer by a process of self-assembly. During the self-assembly of amphipathic phospholipids to form bilayer, the hydrophobic fatty acyl tail regions of the two layers are present in the inner side of the bilayer forming a hydrophobic core isolated from the surrounding water while the hydrophilic head regions face the intracellular or cytosolic and extracellular phases of the bilayer. 
The hydrophobic interactions is the main force responsible for the stability of the bilayer along with non-covalent interactions such as Van der Waals electrostatic and hydrogen bonds. The membrane lipids are distributed asymmetrically in the lipid bilayer with one or more phospholipids present more abundantly in one or the other leaflet. For example, the plasma membrane of human erythrocytes and certain culture-grown canine kidney cells have almost all the sphingomyelin and phosphatidylcholine which forms less fluid bilayers in the exoplasmic leaflet while the cytosolic leaflet contains phosphatidyl ethanol amine, phosphatidyl serine and phosphatidyl inositol which form more fluid bilayers. Such segregation of the lipids with different fluidity in the bilayer may influence the curvature of the membrane. However, unlike phospholipids, cholesterol is relatively evenly distributed in both leaflets of cellular membranes. The asymmetric distribution of lipids in the bilayer provides specificity for different membrane-based functions. For example, the head groups of all phosphorylated forms of phosphatidyl inositol, which is cleaved by phospholipase C, located in the cytosol in intracellular signaling pathways, are present in the cytosolic leaflet of plasma membrane. The lipid composition of the membranes affects the fluidity, thickness, and local curvatures of the membrane. First, let us see membrane fluidity. In most membranes, the phospholipid molecules can rotate freely around their long axis in the two-dimensional plane of a bilayer and also can diffuse laterally within each leaflet of the bilayer. Such rotation generally do not disturb the hydrophobic interior of the bilayer since the fatty acyl chains remain in the hydrophobic interior during the lateral or rotational movements of the lipid molecule. A typical lipid molecule in both natural and artificial membranes generally exchange places with the neighboring lipid molecules in a leaflet about 10 to the power 7 times per second and diffuses several micrometers per second at 37 degrees Celsius. The diffusion rates of membrane lipids indicate viscosity 100 times as great as that of water and similar to those of olive oil. Further, the diffusion constants of artificial lipid bilayer and membrane phospholipid bilayer has been found to be different and this suggests that the membrane lipids may be tightly but not irreversibly bound to some integral proteins in some membranes and the lipids may also not diffuse freely from one lipid rich region to an adjacent one. Now let us see the factors affecting membrane fluidity. The ability of lipids to diffuse laterally in a bilayer indicates its potential to act as a fluid and the degree of bilayer fluidity is determined by the composition of lipids, the structure of hydrophobic tails of the phospholipids and temperature. The first is the lipid composition. The lipid composition varies among different biomembranes and the variation gives rise to different types of membranes, each having unique properties. The differences in the lipid composition may be contributed by different factors, 
Example, the higher percentage of sphingomyelin proportion in the Golgi membranes than endoplasmic reticulum may be due to the fact that sphingolipids are synthesized in the Golgi while phospholipids are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum. On the other hand, the difference in lipid composition may also be contributed by the selective enrichment of membranes with certain lipids during its translocation from one cellular compartment to another. Cholesterol also plays an important role in maintaining the fluidity of membranes. Although cholesterol itself cannot form a sheet-like bilayer, it is usually found intercalated among phospholipids in natural membranes, restricting the random movement of phospholipid head groups at the outer surfaces of the leaflets, while its effect on the movement of long phospholipid tails depends on the concentration of cholesterol. At usual concentrations of cholesterol, the steroid ring interacts with the long hydrophobic tails of phospholipids, immobilizing the lipids and it leads to the decrease in biomembrane fluidity. However, when the concentration of cholesterol is lower, the steroid ring separates and disperses the phospholipid tails and leads to the increase in biomembrane fluidity. Next is the structure of hydrophobic tails. Van der Waals interactions and the hydrophobic effect are responsible for the course of aggregation of the nonpolar tails of phospholipids to form the hydrophobic core. Phospholipids with long saturated fatty acyl chains generally have the greatest tendency to aggregate and it results in the formation of a gel-like state of tightly packed molecules. On the other hand, phospholipids with short fatty acyl chains have less surface area for interaction and they form more fluid like bilayers with loosely packed molecules. Similarly, phospholipids with unsaturated fatty acyl chains also form more fluid bilayers since the length in the unsaturated fatty acyl chains form less stable van der Waals interaction with other lipids than the saturated genes. The third is the temperature. The hydrophobic interior of natural membranes generally has a low viscosity at usual physiologic temperatures and they occur in a fluid-like state. However, when a highly ordered gel-like bilayer with tightly packed molecules is heated, the increase in temperature increases the molecular motions of the fatty acyl tails, causing it to undergo a transition from a gel-like state to a more fluid-like state. Let us take up membrane thickness. The lipid bilayer of membranes is generally 4 to 5 nanometer thick. The thickness of biomembranes is influenced by the lipid composition of the membranes. The difference in thickness of different membranes may in turn influence the selective localization of proteins to a particular membrane. Studies on artificial membranes have demonstrated that the presence of sphingomyelin in membranes generally leads to the formation of a more gel-like and thicker bilayer than the normal phosphoglyceride, for example, phosphatidylcholine bilayer. Cholesterol and other molecules that decrease the fluidity of membranes increases the thickness of membranes. 
However, the addition of cholesterol has no effect on the thickness of a sphingomyelin bilayer since the sphingomyelin tails are already optimally stabilized. Next, let us take up the local curvature of membranes. The lipid composition of a bilayer also influences the local curvature of the membrane since the local curvature of a membrane depends on the relative sizes of the polar head groups and the non-polar tails of the phospholipids. Generally, lipids with long tails and large head groups, for example, phosphatidylcholine are cylindrical in shape and the bilayers formed by them are relatively flat. On the other hand, lipids with small head groups such as phosphatidylethanolamine are cone-shaped and the membranes containing large amounts of cone-shaped lipids usually form curved bilayers. Therefore, a bilayer containing higher amount of phosphatidylcholine in the exoplasmic leaflet and higher amount of phosphatidylethanolamine in the cytosolic phase as seen in many plasma membranes would have a natural curvature. Next, let us take up organization of membrane proteins and carbohydrates. The distribution of proteins in the basic bilayer structure varies in different membrane types depending upon the cell type and subcellular location of the membrane. For example, the inner mitochondrial membrane is made up of 76% proteins while the myelin membrane contains only 18% proteins where the high phospholipid content allows the myelin to electrically insulate nerve cells from their environment. Membrane proteins are of three types, integral proteins or transmembrane proteins, peripheral proteins and lipid anchored proteins as discussed in the lecture for chemical components of membranes. Since the amino and carboxyl groups in a polypeptide backbone are polar in nature, they must be neutralized in the region of the polypeptide chains that passes through the nonpolar hydrophobic core of the membrane. The polarities of the amino and carboxyl groups in the secondary structures of the polypeptides are stabilized by hydrogen bonds between these polar backbone groups and are neutralized to cross the hydrophobic interior of the membrane. For example, in the membrane spanning alpha helix and beta barrel polypeptide chains of integral membrane proteins. Most membrane spanning polypeptides are alpha helical and they may cross the lipid bilayer singly or several alpha helices may bundle together to form a solid mass as in the membrane protein bacterial rhodopsin, a proton pump. On the other hand, beta strands commonly form beta barrels by hydrogen bonding of beta strands with each other which neutralizes the polar backbone amino and carboxyl groups. Beta strands cannot cross the membrane without forming beta barrels. A common example of beta barrels are the porins present in the outer membrane of bacteria and mitochondria. Porins represent a large family of proteins that form pores on the membrane by bonding trimers of beta barrels. All transmembrane proteins and glycolipids are oriented asymmetrically in the lipid bilayer and each type of transmembrane protein also has a specific orientation with the same part or parts of the protein always facing the cytosol while the other part face the exoplasmic space. 
Such asymmetry of proteins established during its biosynthesis and insertion into a membrane is usually maintained throughout the lifetime of the protein. Unlike the lipid molecules, the membrane proteins have never been observed to flip-flop across a membrane since the transient movement of hydrophilic amino acid residues through the hydrophobic interior of the membrane during flip-flop movements are energetically unfavorable. Although many transmembrane proteins and lipid anchored proteins diffuse freely in the bilayer, the mobility of integral membrane proteins is believed to be restricted by interactions with cytoskeleton. In transmembrane glycoproteins or transmembrane proteins containing carbohydrate chains covalently linked to serine, threonine or asparagine side chains of the polypeptide. The carbohydrate chains are always oriented so in the exoplasmic domain. Similarly, glycolipids or carbohydrate chain attached to the glycerol or sphingosine backbone are always located in the exoplasmic leaflet of the bilayer with the carbohydrate chain protruding from the membrane surface. Since the carbohydrate chains of both glycoproteins and glycolipids in the plasma membrane face the extracellular space, they are freely available to interact with components of the extracellular matrix and other molecules such as lactins, growth factors and antibodies. Such glycoproteins and glycolipids are therefore abundant in the exoplasmic leaflet of plasma membranes of eukaryotic cells but are absent in the inner mitochondrial membrane, chloroplast lamella and other intracellular membranes. Now coming to the conclusion. The fluid mosaic model proposed by Jonathan Singer and Garth Nicholson in 1972 described the structure of biological membranes as dynamic and fluid nature in which lipids and protein molecules can diffuse laterally through the membrane. All biological membranes have been shown to consist of a phospholipid bilayer. In addition, biological membranes contain proteins and sugars that form important components of the membrane structure as well as in determining the vital role of the biological membranes as they help to maintain the structural integrity, organization and flow of material through membranes. Thank you.